Welcome to the finale of the 6K Sports Sedan and Wagon Challenge. Presented by Continental Tire. Guess what guys, it's road trip time. That's right everyone. We are starting here at Toronto Motorsports Park. We're not gonna use the drag strip. It's actually under, under construction at the moment. But what we are gonna do is start here Go to the Arctic Circle, yes. then go to Vancouver Island. Yes. Over to Newfoundland. Yeah. And then back to uh, our shop here in Hamilton, Ontario. That sounds like a great plan. Uh, I've packed absolutely nothing. Yeah. You've told your wife. No, which, I haven't told her a thing. I no, no, okay. no, I haven't told All her right. a thing. Well, cannonball style, I guess, right? We're gonna just buy underwear and food on the road. Or maybe what we're gonna do is just <laughs> take you guys no. on a bit of a scenic tour of our favorite places here in Southern Ontario, basically the Hamilton area. Make a few stops along the way. Yeah. Get some uh, feedback from uh, some of our favorite people on what we've done with these two cars. Maybe have them pick which one they like best. That's right. And uh, wrap it up maybe with a little taste of nostalgia. And hopefully Pete's BMW doesn't break down during this trip. I'm we know the it Lexus won't. won't. Yeah, yeah, I'm confident it won't. So. What, we, what we're, I think we're gonna start off with is we're gonna take these for a cruiser lap, not a hot lap, these are not hot lapping cars, no. around TMP, and we'll just talk, quickly talk about, you know, what we like, what we don't like, and just get a feel for the vehicles. Seems like an appropriate way to start a road trip. <laughs> on the on racetrack, the going right. slowly, yes. Well, you know, this is our home away from home, so that's why not right. start it here, where so much of our history That's true, that's true. right here on this racetrack. That is true. So, we don't come here enough anymore. No, it's been rough the last year, but yes. uh, it's nice to be out here on a nice sunny day. And man, this thing... Drives like a new car. It does, and it, I guess it mostly is a new car it now, is. isn't it? It is essentially a new car, yes. Had a full overhaul. It has. Um, where do we start? Well, let's start with the good. The power band, this engine, phenomenal. It We're is. at 3,000 RPM, and, and just feel that. That yep. is, that, it's just, it's, it's incredible. It is. And then feel the brakes. Whoa, Ooh. these soft techs work so well. They do. So. <laughs> they do. Those are, those are excellent, excellent points. Yep. Now the car is on air suspension in the rear. I, I love the ride for the street. It is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. On the track, you can kind of feel it's a little pogo-y. Right. Um, but, you know, it, it's still like, look at it. it. It feels like it can handle the corner yeah. really nicely. No, it does. The shifter was making some noise. Rattling noise there, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. Here. Let me go, let me go into second gear here. You can hear it. Right there, yeah. Right there. It's just at like 3,500 RPM. It's a little vibration. Um, I don't know what that is. I sus it's, it is a rattle in the shifter. I suspect it may be the fact that I don't have the dual mass flywheel. flywheel uh, and it's yeah, that makes sense. Creating a, a, a vibration that's mm -hmm. being picked up and, and transferred into the shifter. That being said, this is one of the best shifters I have ever had in a BMW or any car. Like this thing is, oh, it's it's nice perfect, man. It is abs exactly. It's tight. It's like not super short. You can always find the gear you're looking for. Like yeah. it's so so good. Um, it's just the, the small little rattle. I'm gonna you know talk to Dynan about it and see if they have a, a fix for it. Because, or like you said, if it's a dual mass issue, it might just yeah, be something it's, you have it's, to Yeah, I might, it, you know what, and it's not terrible. Like no. you can see if I slowly come up on it. Yeah. It's only when you're like starting to really get into half throttle. It's always throttle. like around 3,000 RPM per second there. Yes, speaking of throttle input, so the Dynan Stage 1 software, yeah. um, the first time that I loaded it in, I was blown away by how much better 
the like tip in really? and just cruising around throttle is like okay. sh soft throttle inputs. Mm -hmm. Before it was like this mushy kind of like it would surge you like this. Yeah, yeah. And now it's so much better. Like oh, if you've got an E39 M5 and you know, not even mods or no mods, this stage one software is the way to go. This Xtron uh, head unit has been phenomenal. This iBus app. Yeah, I love like, that. I, I literally look at this more almost than the gauge cluster because mm -hmm. it gives you so much great information. Like I have all the readouts that I want. I like the form factor too, yeah, it's really yeah. cool. Yeah, it's super, super Seems neat. Seems very appropriate in this car. 100%, so uh, I do still have this traction control light on, okay. which is a BMW thing. You always need something. That's true, there's on, gotta be some on lights the, on there. Yeah. On the dash, Fair. on the gauge cluster, because yeah. that's that's what yeah. BMW owners have, that's, right? That's so, the life you're living. Yeah, it, I've gotta get to replacing the steering angle sensor on it and hopefully that'll clear it up. And other than that, man, like this thing is just so good on the highway. It's such a good cruiser. I have nothing bad to, you know, report on otherwise. Like there's so, so much good. Now hey, you're cruising in style and comfort, PT. This is the lap of luxury. This is, oh, the ride feels sporty. Can I see that? Oh my goodness, yeah, man. Yeah, it really does. These Fortunato coilovers really do transform the car. Yeah, and I guess all the uh, hard race arms. That too, of course, yeah. yeah. Good alignment from NB Auto. Makes a world of difference too. And of course the Continental tires. Yeah. And uh, unlike you, I didn't have to go and uh, get fancy with brakes because these Lexus brakes actually work remarkably well. That's good. That is good. And uh, the slush box with that revised tune from uh, All for Swap does really liven the car up quite a lot. So uh, really pleased with that. I mean, obviously, you know, I wanted to get really serious about the car and make it more of a true like M5 competitor than, yeah, we six feet swap it, but. Heck yeah. That goes down a rabbit hole pretty quickly where you need to go to a standalone ECU that has the ability to control everything properly and it just, it gets, it gets to be complicated. Yeah, fair. And frankly, for the way I use this car, the automatic's fine. So I, it's kind of nice having a, a lazy cruiser for, you know, family fun runs. As far as the performance of the car goes, it really has improved drastically just with the Fortunato coilovers and adding 70 wheel horsepower. Like it's, it's a lot quicker than it used to be. Yeah, man, it goes. Like it's impressive, dude. Like it just, damn. It feels fun now. Yeah, you know yeah, that's I mean? exactly it. Like for a big 4,000 pound car, yeah. it actually feels Holy fun. Holy smokes. Like like, the throttle response is like so much better. I was going to say, be. like it's it, the ECU tune has transformed this vehicle and with the way it shifts, it, yeah. it certainly feels so much nicer, tighter. I mean, all in all, I think it's a really fun car for what was once a big, lazy luxury sedan. I can kind of say without being ironic that it's kind of a sports sedan now in its own way. Like, Look at this, you're chucking it into a corner here. Of course it's a sports sedan. You wouldn't be doing this with a regular old LS. No, you really wouldn't. Or you'd be, <laughs> dragging a corner and uh man it, i just there's something about this car that really just puts a smile on my face when i'm driving it it's it's got some weird combination of like luxury and style and comfort and it just kind of hits a weird sweet spot in my life right now that i really enjoy so. now i gotta ask about the exhaust yeah um now that you've lived with it is the muffler delete good bad regrets no i don't regret it it, most of the time it sounds really good and I, I like the fact that it's added that sport Yeah, like right now it, it sounds really good. Yeah, like when we're cruising around here, it, it, it's got some presence to it without being too loud. However, I will say that when you're at a stop and you accelerate like you would normally from a stoplight or a stop sign, the gearbox wants to keep it around 2000 RPM and right at that RPM level, it does pick up a bit of drone. Okay. So it gets right. a little boomy, a little droney. Yeah. Yep. And it often wants to cruise at that RPM level as well. But if you're if you're not accelerating or not at lower speeds, it the boominess isn't there. And I did have concerns about maybe the the um, the motor heat soaking without an intercooler. Yep. We haven't had that issue yet, but it's still quite cool out. So you know maybe uh, we'll report back in the summer about whether or not it is heat soaking or not and whether it really needs an intercooler or not. But so far I can say, I have not experienced any performance loss from heat soak with this non-intercooled setup. So pretty happy overall, man. I really can't complain much. Now that we've done a few uh, rolling laps to give you our driving impressions, I think it's time to bring in some very special guests. I think so. See what they think of these two beauties? That's right. They're gonna choose which one they like best here. 
and look, they brought amazing vehicles. A Lexus and a BMW. How convenient. That is very convenient. And these are, of course, the straight pipes. Here I am, Jacob, and uh, conveniently showing up in a Lexus and a BMW. It's almost like it was meant to be, and uh, we want to know which car you guys like best. All right, first of all, you both have the most fantastic tires, 10 out of 10. Yeah, great job on the Extreme Contact Sports by Continental. And what about the wheels, Yuri? I gotta give it to the Lexus. These are such great wheels from Augmented Wheels. Yeah, they're pretty sweet looking wheels. But the BMW ones are really good too. But he's also got sick brakes, he's got stop techs. I don't know. But I, I like that that's a wagon. Yeah, so, I mean, the grill's a little small. I mean, look what I brought. <laughs> don't worry, this is actually ugly. This is much also, I noticed you went with the uh, Blackout because you were debating it in a couple videos. So, I don't know how I feel either, actually. Okay, but I kind of like the chrome. But I like the stance on the Lexus more, I think. The stance? The stance? Yeah, it's but, definitely got that VIP style that's like... But this one's a wagon. We did just do a pretty big wagon comparison. Wagon? <laughs> I think we gotta go wagon. W for the wagon. Yes, yes, victory. Cuts me deep, bros. It cuts me deep. Well, Sorry, uh, also, also, this one only has two pedals in this one. It's two. true, it's true. I, I deserve losing for that alone. So thank you very much. Yuri Good and job. Jacob, go check them out, the straight pipes. All your new car reviews can be found there. I think it's time now for PT and I to move on. We'll stop at a few more places, get some more votes. Hopefully, I can win one of these. All right, PT, we're cruising on our way to NV Auto here, and uh, these are kind of like your typical, you know, back roads, country roads in the Southern Ontario area. Kind of farmlandish, single lane stuff, big ditches to crash into should things go poorly for you. Not a lot of room to pull over when your uh, BMW throws a check engine light, but uh, I don't have those kinds of worries in the Lexus here. I'm just cruising in style and comfort. How about you? I love the ride in this thing. Truth be told, it's not even jarring that the KW suspension on this wagon is superb. I actually think it's softer than your car after driving in your car. Your really? car has more of like that tr typical coilover feel where this has more of a stock feel. It, it floats a little bit more, but it's still, you know, I, I find it still sporty enough where I like it. And I've got the airbags in the back too. What I don't like is, with the, the wagon, you get more noise coming from the plastics, your typical 20 year old BMW plastic like creaking together because I've got that whole wagon, the, the, the trunk area. I'm definitely more uh, Uber X prepared than you are because it's like a limo in here, it's, it's so quiet. And with the open hatch in the back of your wagon too, I find you hear everything kind of rattling around back there where in the Lexus, there's just no noise infiltration from anything really. It's, it's quiet in here. But you know, the upside to that is I actually can hear my exhaust better and the Dynan exhaust is glorious. It is, it is the greatest exhaust here. Listen to this thing. Oh, it just sounds so good. Yeah, my car sounds better than it did. The muffler deletes or should I, yeah, muffler deletes. It's not straight pipe guys. Muffler deletes definitely does give it more sound, but it doesn't have the like true sports car sound that your car has. I, I, I don't think the 3UZ is really ever gonna sound as good as that S62 motor. You know what you get with that motor too is you get top end, you get RPM, and you get more of a, like a motorsports grade sound from it and, and more of like that throttle response. I mean, you got ITBs. It is, it is. It's a, the, the throttle response is, is incredible and just, you know, driving it around everywhere. Like it does everything good. There's not a bad thing. Like stop and go, it's fine. It's awesome going super fast on the highway. Look at this. We're like cruising down these roads at 80 kilometers over these bumps. And you know what? Look at it. It's great. Like I'm not breaking my back. I'm not having to like cringe every time I see a pothole. It's so good. Yeah. And, and, and I'll, I'll agree with you that the coilovers in the Lexus do have a bit more of a coilover feel to them than your car. Your car definitely feels more like OE-ish ride quality. Mine has a, a sportier, firmer feel to it, but over these like bumpy country roads that we're on right now, it's still got really good ride quality. Like I am not getting thrown around in here and uh, it has a much sportier feel than it did before. To me, it kind of hits a sweet spot. It, it really rides 
very nicely while offering much better like motion control and a you know a sportier overall feel so i'm really happy with the fortunatos on this chassis i think they're a really well matched setup we are very close to envy auto now so uh let's pop in there and uh, see what riley and dove and vin and nam think of these two cars We are here at Envy Auto, our favorite Subaru, and pretty much any type of mechanical or fabrication workshop. And we're gonna figure out which car they like, the wagon or the Lexus. So let's bring them on out here. They're charging us by the hour because they're not very productive at the moment. Dove, Vin, and Riley. Nam is doing other things today. But uh, really, we just wanted to get your guys' input on which car would you rather take home? Which one is the winner here in your heart? If you had, could only choose one, and I know, I know you want to choose them both. <laughs> Just choose one to take home with you right now. I'm getting out of here now. You guys talk. Yeah. All right, Riley, why don't we start with you? All right, which one's your choice? So the gut reaction for me is the BMW. As a wagon enthusiast, one of the first cars I ever drove, not trucks, but cars, was an E39 530i, so it's got kind of like a soft spot in my heart. However, if I actually had to own it for more than a week, probably the Lexus. <laughs> because I feel like the BMW would break my spirit in a short matter of time. So you're going with a Lexus. <sighs> to have fun with, to drive like once, BMW, to actually keep, Lexus. All right. Vin. All right, so my first car was a GF Subaru wagon, WRX, swapped in. Absolutely loved it, but I also absolutely hated driving it because I'm an old simple man in my heart and I come in to see the wood grain and the leather, it makes me feel at home. So I'm gonna have to choose the Flexus for this. And... Wow. Think it's three for three, come no, on, Daddy. No, see, I mean, honest, I don't have a good story. I only had one BMW wagon and it was the biggest heartache I've ever had and I sold it. So I can't go with the BMW. And I own a big body Lexus, kind of, sort of now and have I've had GS300 for a long time. These cars are incredible. There's nothing better than everyday driving one of these older big boy Lexuses. So I think with a supercharger, you fix a sluggish kind of like eh with it. Gotta go with the Lexus. Sorry, PT. Wow, that is a, that is a clean sweep, sweep, sweep PT. Whoa, Whoa, holy smokes. Well, you better hope that our next stop, they're uh, bigger BMW fans and they are here at Envy Auto. <laughs> They pick Subarus, but they pick Lexuses here, everyone. Well, we've swapped cars, everybody, and uh, I gotta say it feels weird to use my left leg. This, uh, what's this shifter thing doing in the middle here, PT? That's what the real men use. Oh, that's the man stick, right. I forgot about the man stick. I will admit, I've been thinking quietly, secretly, about a Collins adapter plate and a CD009 transmission in the Lexus. It would add another level of sports today and goodness to that car but man the automatic is awfully nice for like lazy man cruising on the highway and stuff dude it's so good it's so good right now like just cruising you don't gotta worry about anything i just feel like this car is the ultimate cruiser and now with just a little bit more performance it it does have a good stance that car you've gone with a with a bit more of like an oe uh, wheel and tire fitment like you're not as flush to the fenders and you're not as low as I am I think in the Lexus so maybe I've gone a little more fashionista in that car than you have but in this I do feel like I am ready to go for a rip on the Autobahn or like at the big track at Mosport this thing would be a lot of fun too where I can't really say I'd ever feel tempted to take the Lexus to like the racetrack or something this car also has like a, a soft spot in my heart I, I really do love it i think they're just they're different vehicles but they're similar they're both cars that you can daily drive there's a more mechanical feel in this car like you feel the, what the gearbox is doing you can hear the motor more and that is more of like a true sports sedan experience isn't it and i mean the seats in this thing are way more supportive they have way more bolstering the seating position in this car is way sportier so and you've got the third pedal in the gearbox so all in all, I mean, let's be honest, this is the sports sedan or wagon of the two. 
the, what I love about wagons is they give you that utility. Like I've now been using this car to go get groceries, to haul parts to the to the shop. Like I, I, I hauled a couple bumpers home and there's just so much utility that comes with it, but in a car that has that kind of performance. And, and that to me is like the ultimate daily driver where I don't want another car. I don't necessarily love driving an SUV to and from work. And for me, when I'm hauling up parts all the time, that thing is just perfection in that sense. Yeah, and I think it hits a sweet spot too for most car guys have like uh, fast wagon fantasies. Like pretty much every car guy I know, if you talk to them about like a, a big body a sports wagon like this, they love that idea. And I think it's because it hits that sweet spot of like performance and practicality. And this kind of is the ultimate of those two. So uh, yeah, you're definitely winning in the uh, I can haul more stuff competition, aren't you? By the way, PT, uh, we're coming up to Bud's BMW here, which means now is the perfect time for your car to break down on me, but uh, looks like we might make it through. <laughs> Dude, it is solid. That thing has been running great, so, and I've pretty much replaced everything on it, so I think we're good. All right, we're back at BMS Tuning where John, Dan, and Kyle know this car, know both these cars well already because they've both been on the dyno here, but we figured we'd stop as we do our, our spectacular tour of the greater Hamilton area yep. and get your, your vote on which car you like better. There's no rules here, there's no winners or losers, just which one would you rather take home? Tough one. It is, huh? All right, Tough John, one. which one's it gonna be? I'm gonna, pressure. I'm gonna go with the Lexus. Really? I'm gonna go wow. with the Lexus. Because you guys do a lot of BMW work here. A lot of European car work here too, right? Yeah, we do. I thought we maybe do. I'd get my butt kicked here, but all right, I got a vote for the Lexus already. Why, why the Lexus? You know what, it's, I like the look of it. I like the power it made. I know it didn't make as much as the BMW, mm -hmm. but it's just, it's more my style. Okay. Nothing against the BMW, but I think it's just more my, my taste. Right, so you're a gangster is what you're telling me. Yeah. VIP. Fair, fair. <laughs> Next up, what are you going with? I'm gonna go with the BMW. Oh yes. BMW, okay. Why? Why the BMW? I just like have a thing for wagons. Yeah. I like the wagon. I like the SUV, the room. Uh, I like the Lexus uh, personally. I like the Beamer, but but the Lexus is more my style as well. Is it fashion so, thing? Is it just? You, yeah. You I just like the look of it. Yeah. You want to be seen in this car, don't you? Yeah. You feel like you're kind of a big deal. We do live in Hamilton where the Mafia has a significant role in our culture. And this kind of uh, fits that mold well. Well, thanks guys, we really appreciate it. No problem. We're Thank gonna you. continue our tour, I think, to uh, what I consider the best poutine in town. Hi PT, we are here on Barton Street, the dirtiest street in the hammer. Although this area is actually kind of gentrifying up uh, by James Street North here. And we're going to the Dirty South, which I know is a weird name for a restaurant in Hamilton since this is not the South, though it is dirty. Well, I'm pumped on it. It's got really good poutine. It's actually uh, chicken fried poutine. And uh, I'm told it's the best poutine in town. I've had it a few times myself and I certainly consider it to be a delicacy. Thank you, sir. All right, PT. Wow, this is looking good. Well, look at that. I went with the chicken fried poutine and you went with a classic poutine. A little poutine, regular, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this which, is a very uh, Canadian thing. It is, French Canadian. I would say it's a French Canadian delicacy of French fries, uh, French fries, cheese curds, and gravy. And of course, mine also has uh, fried chicken and it looks like sort of like a ranch style dressing on mine. And let me tell you, this is very, very good. Yeah? This is my favorite. I don't want to call it junk food, but the amount of calories and all that that this gives you is it's not, uh, it's not, not, not no. considered healthy. No. But it is certainly, for the taste buds, so, so good. All right, DP, while I uh, wolf this down here, why don't you tell everybody where we're going next here? Well, these are sports sedans or wagons, so uh, let's go do some sporty driving on one of the area's uh, more enjoyable roads. I like that. Yeah. All right, PT, welcome to Snake Road, one of the, uh, the finer driving roads here in the Hamilton area. It's not the canyons of California. I know you were spoiled. You lived out there for a while and got to go and enjoy those roads. It was pretty awesome. This is, this is just a 50 kilometer an hour zone, so we can't really rip through here with reckless abandon, but it is a really nice, twisty, scenic road, uh, kind of up and down the escarpment area a little bit here. So 
a lot of like motorcyclists and enthusiasts come through here. I can tell by the I can tell by the rumble strips that they've put into the road here. Do not go fast. It, it it's so well known that I think they put those like marks in the pavement to slow people down, and I'm sure there's lots of cops trolling for speeders through here. So not it's not really a road that you're going to come and rip on because there's there's houses, there's cyclists, but. Anyway, it's like considered the best driving road in the area. So I figured why not show you and our viewers what this road looks like and uh, gives a bit of an excuse to talk a bit about how these cars handle on a, you know, like a fun twisty road. Well, I think this car actually handles remarkably well considering its mass and size. Um, it's very well composed. I think it has to do with that perfect 50-50 weight balance there that you I go. have, you know? That's right, rub it in, rub it in, yeah, yeah. And the steering on this vehicle is nice and heavy. I find it's crisp, it, it doesn't have any of like that understeer, that front wheel drive understeer turn in that you, that so many cars suffer from. Like it's just, it's really, really nice. Like here you can see I'm going into the corner and it just feels like if I wanted to throw this thing, it would respond and react, you know? It's not sloppy at all. Yeah, and I like these uh, bigger sweeping S's down at the bottom of Snake Road here, which lets you kind of feel the car, you know, his weight transfer a bit. And for a 4,000 pound car, I gotta say the Lexus does handle remarkably well now that we've put these much stickier Continental tires on it. And uh, the stock brakes with the, with the StopTech street pads actually work remarkably well too. I've never run into a situation where I felt like I needed more brakes than I have. Unlike you, I didn't have to put, you know, big heavy hitter stop techs on there. I just, I'm just using these stock brakes and some good pads and I'm good to go, buddy. And you know what? I'm glad I put the stop techs on here because they are phenomenal. It just gives you the confidence that you want. When you know you can bring a vehicle to a quick halt, that's a, a huge confidence booster. And that also is what makes this wagon so damn special. Huh? <laughs> Memory lane or what? Woo. It's the old chicken coop, everybody. Wow. How do you uh, feel about this space? I'm a little nostalgic of it. Yeah. You know, this is where we started everything. Is, this yeah. is where Speed Academy became a thing. This is it, yeah. Yeah, and for those of you guys that don't know, we started our vi fi video filming career here, which is a chicken coop that was converted into a storage unit. Yep. And we spent spring yep summer yep. fall uh, and regrettably uh, winter the worst winter it, was tough man when we did those itbs on the s2000 in here it was the coldest winter ever it was like minus 30 in there oh, it was so, so painful trying to fiddle with little you know things for itbs with gloves on swapping camera but it was horrible anyway yeah. good times here regardless of yes, the temperature yes, issues yes. and of course uh, ken is still here he just moved down to uh the smaller unit. Oh, cool! And, right on. Uh, the new tenants in here do not appear to have changed the padlocks. So uh, <laughs> oh, I still have the key. Me? Let's have a look inside. Oh man, this is going to be good. All right, let's do this. All right. Oh, wow! Yeah, look at that. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> That's a uh, note to people. That's right. So you remember how to open these doors, PT? I do. All right. Woo! Woo! Wait. This might give away who the new tenant is, everyone. <laughs> we weren't doing a B and E here, people. No, this is uh, our buddy Dove from NV Auto. They store a bunch of uh, spillover cars. I, I don't even re cars. remember. Are, are there lights on in here? Like, how there do you turn lights. the lights yep, on? Right oh, there is a switch. Yep. yep. It's been a while, man. Come in, come in, everybody. We spoke to Dove. He said it was fine if we took a look around. And so this is it, man. This was uh, three units. Yes. So it's thirty by fifty with low ceilings. This is the lighting we had. We, you know, we obviously had our other like lights, but it was dark in here. You can see the, like there was no way to retain heat. We painted the walls ourselves. We did paint the walls. And man, yeah. we thought we were kind of a big deal, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? Like you just, you never know where you're gonna get your start. And this was a great place. I still kind of love it. I mean, it's it was the start of something and yeah. it's like a gritty real space. Like For average sure it was. car guys could afford to rent. The rent here is cheap. Heck yeah. And, for and that's what the average car guy does. Yeah. Rents a place like this and you start working on it. And yeah. 
Yeah. That so. said, I do like our new space oh, an of awful course, lot. Of course. When we left this place, there was a lot of complaints that we weren't keeping it real anymore. But you yeah. know what? I would not come back no, here in a heartbeat. No. It's just nice to have a proper place. Having so. a lift and having heat yes. and having space. Yes. Having epoxy floors and bright walls. It's all good. It man. is. It's it really good. is. So, uh, I do miss the coop, but I think it's time to move on, PT. All right. This uh, road trip is coming to a close. So uh, let's head back and enjoy, bask in the glory of the new place. Well, it's great to be back here after seeing the chicken coop. Yeah, this I know, is right? It's so cool. in here. So good. <laughs> very, very thankful for this place. No doubt, me too. And uh, before we wrap this thing up, we do have one more person who we need to get a vote from. We do, we do. And he's very important. He is. And he is holding the camera. He's been helping us today. And yeah. that is? He's also large and sweaty and uh, likes E36 M3s and uh, well, Hondas, really. He's, he's, he, deep down inside, he's a Honda guy. Or today, I'm going to assume you're a Lexus guy. What's, what's going on, Moose? What are you voting for? Well, I like the stance of this car. I like the way it looks. I like its presence. It is, it, it's got better presence than the Beamer. It really does. And it drives better, I think, and it, it rides better. But I have a soft spot for wagons. Yes. I have a real soft spot for hot wagons. And that motor. Oh, I know. That motor, I drove it, and to be honest, I kind of like that car. Yeah. It's the motor. I mean, it's... But it's you already own one BMW, Moose, and you know how uh, reliable they can be. Would yeah. you really do that to yourself twice? That motor. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's that motor. It, there's, there's something about it. That's it, right, Moose. That is the choice. It, it is. It, I, the motor, that motor is, hands down, yeah. the, the dominant it, characteristic of that car. It right? is... A V8 that sounds like a V8, it drives like a V8, but revs like a six. Yeah. And it makes good noises. It does. It really does. So, All right. Well, so it's five for the Lexus, four for the BMW. Does that mean we're declaring a victor? You are officially crowned the victor. Lexus, the Lexus Apparently, wins the six K. Yeah, the, the old man challenge. car won. Woo! Old That's man right. car won. You all need beige and wood trim in your life. As long as you supercharge your Lexus like I did. Well. To the victor goes to spoils, and that means I get to start what is the outro to this build sure. series, to this build off. And what a fun experience it's been. I think we can both say it's surprising to us how popular these builds have been. Yeah, when we started these builds, we thought, man, we're gonna have to just like pile through them real quick because we weren't expecting them to do, do good views. And yeah. ironically, they've been, these two cars have been the most viewed for videos, the most popular on our channel you know, ever. Yeah, as, as in terms of a, as a build series. Yeah, 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 yeah so. Pretty amazing. And you know, when Pete and I chat about it with our, our friends or amongst ourselves about it, we kind of think maybe the formula has been that these were kind of un unexpected builds. Yeah. They were like cool enough to be interesting, but also obscure enough to be like, oh, I haven't seen this before. So it kind of maybe found a sweet spot that way, but yeah. do let us know in the comment section why you think exactly. these uh, been interesting builds uh, from a viewing standpoint. We'd really like to know your opinion on that so that we can try to capture that magic van that's going right, forward. That's right. And we will, of course, tease you a little bit momentarily about what we're doing next. Sure. But before we do that, maybe we should just recap these builds a little bit and what some of the highlights and lowlights of the M5 build has been for you so far. Yeah, I think, you know, with this build, I just was not expecting so much work. In yeah. theory, it was taking an engine you know, a drivetrain out of one car and putting it into another car, no real custom fabrication, but there was just so much. The, the BMW rabbit hole is real. Mm -hmm. If you want to service things, I just said to myself, I want to do the, the right thing and, and do the rod bearings. And then rod bearings turned into, you know, sensors, gaskets and all that. And the next thing you know, you're, you're almost rebuilding an engine. And then it just takes time. Like it, I think the, the real thing of, of what so many people say that rings true is, you know, 90% of the build happens at the last 10% yeah. and really trying to get everything buttoned up. And, yeah. and it rings so true with both these cars. It's just like, took so much longer than expected to get them all together. But yeah. I couldn't be happier with this thing. It is it's beautiful. Like 98% there. It's got a couple of things. And yeah. that's mainly so much thanks goes out to all the sponsors, like companies that provided parts, um, you know, FCP Euro for, for helping out and Paul at Fixels who has been yeah. Like an absolute oh champion. I've bugged him more times than I know, and he's always, he's never told me to, you know, go f 
myself. Kick, kick rocks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's he's just been so, so good and helped me through this build. And I know I've mentioned it before, but it, it's just been tremendous to have somebody there that, you know, almost a mentor yeah, literally with a build like this that can thing, tell yeah. me and, and help me, you know, with the programming. Like, that was a big thing, so. Yeah. But anyways, I, I'm super pumped. I, I love the car. I think to, to date, this is probably my favorite build that we've wow, done. Really? Wow. Yeah, like I love this car. It's hard to communicate and you know, until you go for a ride in this vehicle, you kind of understand yeah. the E39 M5 magic yeah. that so many people talk about. It is pretty special. Like I've driven it a bit myself now and wow, it is an awesome car to drive. The gearbox and engine combination is magical. It really is great. And that said, I I'd have a hard time not taking that if Pete offered it to me in a straight trade for the Lexus. <laughs> Not only because it's worth a lot more, but because it really does drive like a true sports sedan or wagon in this case. Where the Lexus to me still has the soul of a luxury car. Yeah, for sure. Still, you know, with the, with the slush box gearbox and just the long wheelbase and you know, the amount of sound deadening oh, in it. so good inside. It's still very luxurious. Uh, so I'm not sure we can really, you know, say we've transformed it into a sports sedan, but it's certainly a lot sportier than it was. Yeah. And I do really enjoy the added power that we got out of that supercharged setup. I want to thank Maurizio from 507 Garage who reached out early on when he saw we were going to build these and said, you know, you should really consider supercharging that. And I was like, I don't really know of any good options. And he introduced me to Travis at Elate Manufacturing who, you know, opened up this whole opportunity of supercharging this in a really, I think, simple, elegant way that didn't require a standalone ECU didn't even require us to Yeah, that was it. huge. No, no fuel system. No, no fuel like system. We, we probably put that together in like two days. I mean, without filming, we exactly. you could do that in a day. You could do that in a weekend. You really yeah. could do that in a weekend. And it runs remarkably well on the factory ECU. So really love that setup. And of course, you know, the suspension transforms the car a lot too. And uh, the wheel and tire package and the stance is really what makes it and kind of defines it. And of course, you know, like the lip kit. And sure, the, yeah, but yeah. visually, I think, why people voted for this car is because it looks cool. Yeah, and I mean, you know, the wheels at first, when Dave told me, mm -hmm. he was like, oh, we're, I, I've got a really neat, funky, crazy idea. Yeah. I didn't know what to expect. Yeah, I can tell man, you didn't love it. I can tell you, you didn't you, love you, it. You, when they bolted on, it just looks so cool and unique. Yeah. And it's I rolled the dice on it. Cool. I, it might've turned yeah. out terrible. Yeah, but, but I got it lucky turned out it. great. great. Yeah, so. yeah, I love it. Other than our buddy Dimitri who says they look like square wheels, but most people love them and, and I certainly do, which, which, which is what matters most. So we do have one more very important sponsor to thank. Yes, we do. And that very special sponsor is of course Continental Tire who made this whole build series possible. And if we haven't convinced you to go and try their tires just with the performance that we've gotten out of these extreme contact sports in this series and in many other, on many of our other projects, we just recently learned that they offer this incredible thing called the Total Confidence Plan and it's a, a warranty package that comes with every new set of tires that you buy. So this only applies to tires that you bought, not the tires that came on your car when they're new, but if you go out and buy a set of Continentals, equip them on your car, you get three years of roadside assistance. And what that means is they'll come and change a flat tire on the side of the road for you, and if that doesn't fix the problem, you will get a tow up to 150 miles for free as part of this warranty plan, essentially. It's also got a tread wear out coverage package which covers up to 80,000 miles. So if your tires, depending on the model, if your tires wear out before 80,000 or in some cases 60,000 miles, they'll re replace the tire. They also have a 60 day customer uh, satisfaction trial period. So in the first 60 days of ownership, if you're unhappy for the, with the tires for whatever reason, you will, uh, they'll replace the tires. They also have a road hazard element to this, meaning within the first 12 months, if the tire gets damaged, they'll replace the tire for free. So the fact that you can buy these incredibly high performing tires at very competitive prices, get tremendous performance out of them and have all of these like warranty type of services offered to you for free as part of the, the purchase price. All you have to do is go to their website and register. Kind of blows my mind that you get three years of roadside uh, assistance like that. So uh, please do consider going and trying Continental Tire on your next car because we've just been absolutely delighted with the performance of them. And now that we know that you also get all this warranty stuff, we really can't think of any reason to run anything else. So go check out Continental Tire, everyone. Thanks again for watching and you will see some very cool new projects coming at you soon, which might have a little JDM Legends flavor to them.
and I'm super pumped to get started on those two JDM Legends builds. But I should say, man, what's up with my Supra, Pete? It looks like a total beater sitting next to your mint condition GTR. So I've got a little work to do on that. I don't know. It's going to be the flip of this build where all the time and effort's going to have to go into the Supra if it's going to match the, uh, the freshness of that GTR. And uh, by the way, guys, we should uh, say a very special thank you to Yuri and Jacob from the Straight Pipes. All those sweet rolling shots that you saw of these two cars at TMP was shot by them. So thank you guys very much for helping out with that. We really do appreciate it. And on the topic of like rolling shots and driving videos, we do want to point out that the last video we produced, those roll races, drag races, and so on of us driving the cars has not performed very well, which is a bit disappointing to us because when we did the whole reboot of the channel, we asked you guys for a ton of feedback and you said you want to see us driving these cars more. Drive, drive, drive which is like probably the most commented thing we got from people. And yet that video has performed much weaker than like Pete fixing random garbage on his M5. So it kind of feels like you guys really want to watch wrenching more than you want to watch driving. However, if you disagree with that and you do want to watch more driving, share that video and let us know in the comment section that you do want to see more of that and uh, tell your friends to watch these things because Unless they perform, it's really hard for us to put all the time and effort into making those because those types of videos really do take a lot more effort to produce. We have to bring in superstars like Yuri and Jacob to help out, help, help out sometimes. So yeah, please let us know what's going on there because we're a little confused at the moment. We hope you enjoyed this one though and uh, we hope we get a better response to it. And finally, I should mention that this car and the M5 are not gonna go away. You will see them on the channel again if we have any updates to offer to you guys on them. So. Let's say this thing's overheating in the summer and we need to intercool it, we'll shoot a video about that. Or if Pete breaks down on the side of the road again, probably in a week or two, we'll shoot another video on that. So uh, you will see more of these cars in the future. It won't be like a full, full out build series, but we do plan to do periodic updates as the situation warrants it. So uh, thanks again, guys, for all your enthusiasm on these two builds. We really enjoyed them a lot, but we are pumped to move on to those two JDM legends. To get their feedback on what they think of these two cars. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's try it again! All right.